Hello and welcome to part three of this series where I will be building a, and programming a protogen head. Um, as you can see, I have the hardware working. This is not my software yet. Uh, I'll go into details on that uh, shortly, but the hardware is all functioning. Uh, the microphone's working, obviously, because you can see the little mouth animating when I'm talking. And with this little um, IR sensor, sensor over here, a little range sensor, if I move my finger in close to it, you can see that it starts doing that little animation it was doing last time. So what was going on was I had the boop sensor enabled, but it wasn't hooked up, so it was always reading it as being booped. And that's why the colors weren't, uh, color settings weren't working. But, yeah, the little boop sensor is working, the little microphone is working, uh, the hardware is all working. But now, uh, let me just go over what I've been working on for the last few days. It's been a week since the last time I recorded anything. And I spent a lot of time last weekend struggling with getting this working in TinyGo. Okay, as you probably have noticed by now, I have a monitor, keyboard, and mouse set up on the workbench now, including this nice little keyboard tray, so I can get the keyboard out of the way of working on stuff on the workbench. Short version of what's going on with the software is I spent over a day trying to get TinyGo to work with these RGB uh, displays on the Teensy. Tried several, well, at least two or three different drivers with and without the shield, just trying to get it to work, but I just could not do it. I think there's just, it's out of my wheelhouse getting the low level hardware support needed for the Teensy 4.1 into TinyGo. So unfortunately I'm gonna be shelving using the Teensy. Okay, so um, realized when I went to go to post-production that I completely forgot to mention some important things that I had discovered. The problem that I was having with programming the Teensy in TinyGo was that Windows just doesn't like it for some reason. I, maybe I just had a bad Teensy loader, but as soon as I plugged it into a Linux computer and tried to program it there, it worked just fine. I did eventually get it to flash without using TinyGo directly, and using a different tool by just compiling to an ELF file and sending that. But it turns out that the Teensy 4.1 support in TinyGo is not fully baked. I had to cobble together files from the official distribution of TinyGo and somebody else's fork from about a year and a half ago that properly configured like the memory sizes and such. And then this other tool was able to flash it. Um, but that was just not a good working solution because it just took too long. Switch to Linux, everything worked just fine. Uh, GoLand's TinyGo plugin isn't working great for me on Windows, but it works mostly just fine on Linux, so that's another reason I wanted to just switch to Linux. That computer I have set up downstairs is actually my file server. It's been there the whole time. I just added a keyboard, mouse, and monitor for it. And yeah, that, that's why the change from my laptop over to another computer and the change from Windows to Linux and what the actual problems with TinyGo and the Teensy were. Clearly the hardware can support it because it's running the software, but I want to write my own software and I want to do it with TinyGo. So I've given up using the Teensy for now. I have ordered a Matrix Portal uh, microcontroller board from Adafruit, which uh, is designed specifically for controlling uh, these RGB displays. And there is a driver specifically for this board for TinyGo to support these displays. So it had better work. <laughs> the, the downside of this is, uh, is um, it doesn't have a clock in it as far as I'm aware. So I can't like have it store the time and keep track of it even when the whole thing is off. It has, it's, it's significantly slower. It has less storage and less memory. It has quite a few fewer input and output pins to be able to hook other stuff up, but there should still be enough for what I want to do on here. On the plus side though, this has an ESP32 Wi-Fi coprocessor on it, so it is it should be simple to uh, connect this to the internet if I want to be able to have like remote configuration or pulling stuff in for whatever to display on the screen or I'm not entirely sure what to I do with it yet. This has a USB-C connector on it, and 
has output pins for power, so if I get a sufficiently powerful USB-C power device or power bank, I probably can just power the RGB screens off of these screw terminals on this device so I don't have to have a multi-port USB power adapter. I just have to plug one thing in. It has these little headers on here to make plugging in uh, I squared C stuff a little bit easier. Uh, I believe this one's for I squared C and this one can be used for audio, but I don't know if I'm going to need that. Actually, I might make my own little adapter cable from that little microboard, microphone board I have. And this has a built-in accelerometer. Um, which I might just use to make it turn the stuff off after not detecting motion for like five minutes or something. In case you take the head off and forget to turn it off. Just to save battery power. But otherwise, it should be pretty similar. Yeah, this definitely has support in Tinego. This is a little bit better than even the Teensy 4.0 was, let alone the 4.1. So it, the driver should be all there. As I mentioned, there's a driver specifically for this board for the RGB LEDs, so that should just work. And this also has external spy flash, I believe. So I could probably use that to save settings or what have you if needed. Unfortunately, because Monday was a holiday this week, the stuff isn't going to get here until this coming Monday. And I'm going out of town starting Thursday, so I'm probably not going to have much time to mess with this for about a month. Going out of town followed immediately by going to a local furry con. It might be a while until we get to see this on, on this channel. I might be able to squeeze in some time next week early to record a quick demo of hopefully getting stuff running on it, but we'll find out now that we've seen how this hardware can behave here. I figured I'd show you what I have written so far on software because I'm not just wasting time while waiting for hardware to get here. I am, I am spending my time writing some software uh, I can still at least do some work with the, the Teensy here, and as I'll show you shortly, I also have a way to test a lot of the code on the computer so I don't even have to use a microcontroller. But for now, I'm going to take some of this hardware off of the Teensy that I'm not going to need for this demonstration, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've removed all the components that we don't need right now. Uh, all that's left is the Teensy itself, the little OLED display, and the proximity sensor. What I have running on it now is a little simple program I wrote specifically to test these devices. Uh, as you can see, the screen is displaying some text, loose little wire connections, so sometimes these connections are a little bit touchy. Um, if I bump it the wrong way, the, the screen turns off and it won't come back. That is about as close as I will be able to get before the camera decides it doesn't want to focus. So this is just a simple little program on here. Um, as you can see, has text on it. It has some. Some of the text has inverted video on it. That was me just testing those features of the library. You can also see that it says "prox" at the bottom with a number after it. That is the raw value coming back from this proximity sensor over here. So if I tilt it up so it doesn't see the tip of the desk, it the number goes a lot higher. And then if I move my finger in front of it, the number gets a lot lower. And it only updates like once a second, so. So, this is proving that this proximity sensor is working, that I can talk to it over I squared C. Obviously, the screen's working. Uh, the screen was an important thing to get working because once I get the screen working reliably, then I can use the screen to help debug other problems instead of just using that little blinking light uh, as the only way to be able to debug anything on here. But that is just this example program. I've used this example program or experiment program is what I have it called. It's what I actually named it. Uh, we can just look at it over here. We set up I squared C. Uh, we create the L OLED driver here. Uh, we create a little text buffer library that I wrote to be able to manage the text on the screen without as, as like an actual text display and not just a pixel display. Um, and then we create the driver for the proximity sensor. And then we just go in a loop where every second we read the proximity sensor and update it on the screen. Very simple program. Works quite well to validate that this hardware is working. The next thing I have on here is the beginnings of the actual Protogen uh, style code. There's a lot of work still to be done on this. 
But why don't I just show what it does so far? I have to press the button to be able to put this thing in the programming mode. You'll notice that the lights stop blinking because it's in programming mode now. Okay, it programmed. And for some reason, sometimes it doesn't want to boot after it programs. So I have to power cycle it, and we're back to the screen being a funky little bitch. This display is quite finicky sometimes. I don't know if it's a software or if it's just flaky wires in this particular setup, but sometimes it just does not want to work. Uh, with this particular software, I put the other software on it, it worked okay, put this on, it still didn't work, went back and forth a couple times, now all of a sudden it was working, so hopefully it's still going to work. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and plug power into this board, and you can see what the current, uh, there's not a whole lot to see here, but this is what the actual protogen code does right now. And that's it. <laughs> it just puts some boot messages on the screen. Uh, it says the time, which is inaccurate, because it doesn't have a permanent clock yet. Uh, that was just me validating that I can set the offset so if, for instance, I can use the Wi-Fi module to perform an NTP lookup, I can then set the clock so it will be accurate for that boot. But yeah, that's all it does right now is output that stuff on the screen. Um, kind of boring, I know. Maybe I hyped it up a little bit too much. I've been working on the software quite a bit, and one of the things I did before I even got any of the hardware was work on a simulator to run it on the computer. So if I go over to this, and then run this, after I turn the breakpoints off because I don't need them right now, uh, you'll see that, and let me just click the run button here. Um, for the most part, this will do the exact same thing into this, these simulator windows, which are already done. Um, but then I was also experimenting with loading ping files, which is what's going on over here. Uh, this time was accurate because this is running on my computer as a regular Go program, so it was able to use the computer's clock. Uh, apologies for all the little rainbow artifacts between the little pixel blocks here. I have no idea why that happens on this computer and only on this computer. If I run it on a different Linux computer, it's fine. If I run it on my desktop upstairs, it's fine. If I run it on my desktop with X1140 from this computer, it still happens. So it's something with this computer. I need to get rid of this little rainbow effect which I was doing to test that the pixel display emulation was working at all. And then this is a remnant of doing text testing on the larger screen as well because it driver supports it. As you can see we have the same text over here. Uh, we have a little input window which isn't useful for much of anything yet except causing the menu window to just go random colors because I was testing that the button worked. And I loaded one of my telegram stickers uh, onto the screen here in very, very uh, crusty quality but the point of this was, can I load ping files and shove them on the screen? And the answer appears to be yes, because I used the tiny Go ping library to do this instead of the full-size Go library. So I should be able to do this on the microcontroller as well. Once I get the displays working with a controller, microcontroller that they work with, that is going to be one of the first tests, is can I load a ping onto the display? And if I can, then I can do pixel art for the different components of the face and store them as ping files to make them easier to customize. You can also load other stuff in here. I'd probably probably go with Go Embed to embed the ping files into the binary, assuming that works with TinyGo. I haven't tested it yet, but um, I just don't want to have to convert them to some source code format if I can help it. This is running substantially the same code as the microcontroller is. Obviously, there's a bunch of code extra to make it show up on the computer screen. The actual code that did the drawing of this menu screen, that the library that draws the text, the actual outputting of the text, that is all the exact same code that ran on the microcontroller. As it is right now, there's still a lot of work to be done on the simulator even to make the code slightly less jank because a lot of this was just 
figuring out how to make it work at all. Like this code is very not well laid out, but this was just, can I get GTK working so I can draw windows? Can I do a pixel display type thing in this window? And can I do buttons? And all of it obviously is working now. So I just need to clean the code up, make it a little bit nicer, uh, especially clean up the ping decoding code. This was very haphazardly thrown together a couple of nights ago just to try to get it to work. And the actual code for the protogen part as well is in early stages, but I'm almost to the point where I can just go really hard on working on this code. So there's, there's still work to be done on the code. Um, I have repositories up on GitHub with this stuff, but it is super rough and I don't have everything pushed up there yet, but it's, it's, it's getting there and I am looking forward to writing a bunch of this code. It should be a lot of fun, it shouldn't get too complicated, and it should be very easy to extend support for other hardware devices. Uh, right for, for right now, I'm just going to support the hardware stuff I have set up, but I'm designing this in such a way that it is easy to plug other hardware in. And that's the whole point of having the simulator, because the simulator interface is so much different than the microcontroller interface. It's, I have a bitmap image, basically, that I am putting on the screen here. I have to toggle those bits in the image set much differently than I would toggle bits on a screen on hardware. Um, for input, I have little click buttons or what have you. And it's going to be a lot different than looking at buttons on pins on a microcontroller. So it should make it easier to port it over to other microcontrollers if you can get um, appropriate hardware drivers for the specific stuff you want. The protogen code should be simple enough to port over. But I think that's all that I have for right now. I am going to, as I mentioned, be getting more hardware in on Monday. I might try to get a quick recording made before I go on my trip on Thursday, but I will definitely not have time to edit it. So that will not come out for at least a couple more weeks. But yeah, just a quick update of what the current status of the, the hardware and software is. And I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, if you want, if you're interested in this series, hit that subscribe button, um, comment, like, whatever, make the algorithm happy. Let me know that people are actually watching this so I know that it's worth my effort to go through recording and editing this. I'm getting better at editing, uh, but I am definitely still not great at it. And I will probably look into getting a better audio setup soon. But again, only if people are actually watching, so. Make it look like you're watching if you're actually enjoying this. But um, until next time, thanks for watching.